This is Welcome to Little Cup, a series about the differences between each generation of Little Cup, starting with Generation 4 Little Cup has a few key differences compared to the other generations. These are a lack of team preview, which means dedicated leads. Pursuit and hidden power are still present before they are removed in future generations. A significantly reduced Pokemon pool due to not having future staples such as Bullaby, Ponyard, and Minfu. Permanent weather, which is not changed until generation 6 and pre-nerf explosion and self-destruct, which is changed in Generation 5. The most important of these differences is no Eviolite. Instead, the most popular item is Orinberry, which restores 10 HP, which is around 30-50% to 50 for most Pokémon in the tier. This means that the team styles are either Offense or Hyper Offense. Stealth Rock, the famous entry hazard introduced in Generation 4, is technically slow. Some very common leads are not Rockers, such as Staryu, Machop, and Coughing. There are still Rock leads, such as Gligar or Bronzor, but because of the lack of Eviolite, they have a significantly smaller impact game to game. The best Pokemon in the metagame, as of time of recording, are Gligar and Munchlax. Munchlax's extreme bulk, afforded by its high HP and good special defense stats, allows it to be a defensive backbone on many teams. Combined with Thick Fat, which gives Munchlax an Ice and Fire resistance. This is vital for Pokemon such as Ponyta, Snover, Houndor, and Coughing. In addition, Munchlax has a deep move pool with moves such as Earthquake, Brick Break, Fire Punch, Ice Punch, and Pursuit, allowing it to hit everything in the metagame very hard. This combined with stab options in return and double edge, while boasting a fantastic base 85 attack, means that the only reliable switch-ins are the ghost types in Ghastly and Duskull. Its only issue is its pitiful speed, which means that it will rarely move first. This is an easy trade-off due to being fantastic in every other area. Gligar is S-tier, due to being a fully evolved Pokémon in a tier full of baby Pokémon. It has great defense, attack, and speed, while having good HP and special defense. Its move pool is very deep, having access to moves such as Aqua Tail, Earthquake, U-Turn, Stealth Rock, Sword Stance, Agility, and Baton Pass. Its main issue is the inability to do everything, however. It wants to have a Choice Scarf to become uncontested in the Speed Department, but being able to sweep with Sword Stance or Agility is exceedingly strong as well. There is a plethora of special attackers and waters within the tier, such as Whalmer, Chinchu, Mantike, and Staryu. You are also walled by Bronzor and Duskull if you are not a Sword Stance variant. Priority is abundant within the tier, such as Ice Shard from Snover, Fake Out from Apom and Krogunk, Quick Attack from Talo and Doduo, Sucker Punch from Stunky, Diglett, Krogunk, and Houndor, Aqua Jet from Buizel, Kabuto, and Carvana, Shadow Sneak from Duskull, and Extreme Speed from Dratini and Zigzagoon. This, in total, makes the tier extremely fast, with most games rarely taking more than 15 to 20 turns. Other notable Pokémon are Snover, whose typing and ability to summon hail make it a fantastic offensive and defensive threat due to its water resistance, access to Wood Hammer, Ice Shard, and Sword Stance to hit extremely hard, even versus the Tier Kings. Then there is Chinchu, who becomes an extremely threatening sweeper due to access to agility, stab Hydro Pump and Thunderbolt, and either of Hidden Power Grass or Fire to hit opposing Chinchu and other waters, or Snover and Bronzor, respectively. Ghastly is a massive threat due to its access to Stab, Shadow Ball, and Sludge Bomb, Will-O-Wisp, Substitute, and the Pre-Nerf Explosion. Due to Levitate and its typing, it can also switch into both Gligar and Munchlax reliably and force your opponent into very difficult counterplay. Finally, Duskull has access to Will-O-Wisp, Thief, Pain Split, Shadow Sneak, and Memento to become a fantastic support Pokémon that has the bulk to take quite a few hits. In total, it is a very fun and fast-paced metagame that puts heavy emphasis on good plays, knowing the metagame, and understanding what your opponent has in their team composition. I highly recommend that anyone play it, whether old or new, due to its very unique traits that make it so unlike any other metagame. I do urge caution for newer players due to this uniqueness, but it is still very engaging if you do try it. 
Thank you all very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you could like, share, subscribe, and comment down below, all of that engagement would be most helpful. Have a good day!